uh, some of the best investigative journalism is done by people inside the field. Uh, comes to mind a guy by the name of Elon Musk, who, <laughs> who uh, I love the, the possibility that he gets a Pulitzer for that interview. But uh, he grilled the crap out of Vlad, the uh, CEO of uh, Robinhood. I'm not sure if you're oh, on, um, on, on the, Clubhouse. On Clubhouse the other night. Yeah, I saw you guys in there. I was kept out. I wasn't quick you, enough. My like, thumbs don't go fast enough. So I was, and I wasn't about to sit in the waiting room. Have you yeah. tried that social network, by the way, the Clubhouse? I've, I've gone in there a few times and checked some things out. I'm there. I have a few questions about it that, um, like, if I'm in there, it, it, how one can participate or not participate. I I like being a fly on the wall for those conversations. I've yes. been very curious as to what's going on in there. Oh, it's quite. Yeah. I mean, I have a, a lot of thoughts. I've maybe it's useful to comment. I also have a Discord server uh, that uh, you know has a few tens of thousands of people on it, and then they have a, also a voice chat capability mm. so they the, have these get-togethers and i i was using it in the in the spring and summer like actively uh on those voice discussions and it's anywhere from 10 to like a thousand people all together in voice like you, you anyone can speak anytime right but there's this weird dynamic that people stay quiet and only one person speaks at a time because they're all like respectful and it's a community of like uh like fundamentally respectful people, even though they're all anonymous. So like, except like me and a few others, it's all anonymous people. So interesting. And it works, It's but the, the, the magical thing to me about that community was how intimate voice only communication can be. It felt as intimate as like a, like a small get together at a home with close friends it felt like there's a calmness to it and you're revealing things about, you know, uh, somebody suffering from depression or being suicidal. So the, those are the dark things or being super excited, getting a new girlfriend or boyfriend, like just the, the depth of human experience shared on voice without video is, uh, I was really surprised how intimate that is for human connection, especially in this time of COVID, it replaced that. So that, so that, so just to give you some context, there's something there. There, I, There's definitely something there. One thing that comes to mind is when, like in Clubhouse, you have your little icon, so yes. they don't actually, you don't see your face moving. I think when people see their own image, it puts them in a state of self-consciousness that is eliminated by just having an icon or an avatar. Yes, absolutely. Right, so like Zoom, is dreadful because if I'm not used to talking to people and seeing a little image of myself staring back at me in yeah. the mirror. And it's just, I know there are ways that you can adjust that, but it's really awful. Yeah. And I think that when I get on Zooms now, I say hello and then I shut down the video component and then I just talk in the end, I come back on just to show that it's still there, it's still me. But I think that voice only is really interesting. Eddie Chang would be an interesting person to talk to about this because he understands so much about how inflection communicates emotionality in deeper state. But there, there's a balance between, I think just like you said, this the privacy uh, somehow uh, allows for the intimacy. So like being able to, uh, as opposed to put on, putting on an act, which I realize we do when we're visually presenting ourselves right. in remote communication, but I think that there's so few places where people can actually communicate without the fear of penalty. Yes. Those that's you know woefully absent these days. And so maybe people are just relieved to be in a place where they feel like I can say what I want or not say anything and it's okay. And so so Clubhouse, as you to answer your kind of uh question, is uh it was a big improvement to me over Discord, which is it has tiers, is uh, it has a stage where people the person that created the room can invite people up that would like to speak potentially, have the opportunity to speak. And then there's a bigger audience that don't get a chance to speak unless they click raise their hand and they get called on. So there's like a tier system that allows for there to be a group of like five, 10, 20, 30 people talking and a lot larger amount in the audience, which in Discord was the problem was that everybody could talk. And the other thing about Clubhouse is everybody is strongly encouraged to represent themselves. So you're using your real name. It's not anonymous. And How many people were in that um, GameStop discussion the what, other day? They currently uh, limit rooms to 5,000. So I'm sure we maxed out at 5,000. There's a lot of overflow rooms. 
this is the cool thing about Clubhouse. Really big people were on there, all tuned in and having a conversation, having all from all, you know all these different uh, worlds being able to connect. Even though without the niceties of like arranging the meeting, you could just show up and leave, mm -hmm. which is really nice. But uh, the reason I'm for my lessons from Discord, I'm going to mostly stay away from Clubhouse, and I think. Or go in there under another name. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, uh, I'll pretend I know the actual, your actual name on Clubhouse. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I've learned, it's, it's quite addicting. It's, mm. uh, it's a time sink. It's so, the intimacy of it is, you find yourself wasting quite a bit of time on there. It pulls you in. Well, it's interesting. The, we're t in sort of going back to the podcast or earlier we're talking about books or creating a technology. One thing that's absolutely clear is that anything that's easy to reproduce is probably not worth much effort and time. Yes. Right? I mean, th most posts could be easily reproduced. You just repost them. Yeah. So um, now there are some original posts that for which the attribution goes to the original person and it's clear it came from you. But anything that can be easily reproduced is doesn't really expand us very much as individuals or or as groups. And most of what I see on social media is stuff that can, is is purely reproduced. Yes. Right. But I think Clubhouse. I mean, it could be that some real magic emerges on there. So in, in moderation, it could be good. The magic is this is another thing that I've found through COVID that maybe you can think about. Uh, is uh, live, I used to be, not understand the appeal of live video or live connection or like in this clubhouse live events because clubhouse is technically for the most part, it's not supposed to be recorded. Most people don't record most conversations. It's a one-time live event. And there's a magic to that. There is. That's not captured by a like your podcast or, uh, or my podcast produced video that's like recorded, like packaged up. Well, anything can happen. It's anything that anything can happen. can happen. And those, those that's the kind of thing like live concerts. Right? I, I definitely, I love live music. And it's the idea that, cause you can always listen to the album. Mm -hmm. Actually the album usually sounds cleaner and better, but it's just this idea that anything can happen. And then you listen to like the parts, I don't know, you uh, like uh, Costello did something weird, uh, your dog did something weird, and then you have to go, oh, God damn it, you have to go to the kitchen or something to get something and then you come back. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, I watch a lot of video like that of people and I'll be there for the whole time. I'll wait for them to go to the kitchen and come back. It's not like I tune out. And right. It, and that makes it like a richer experience for some reason. It's weird. Well, it humanizes it. And yeah, I think humanizes that, it. And I think there is this weird effect of whether or not it's a podcast, Instagram, or Twitter, or anything else. There is kind of like two people shouting into a tunnel and then a bunch of people with ears at the other end of those tunnels and shouting some things back. And, you know, that's, that's kind of the format we're in. I think uh, I'll check out Clubhouse again. I've gone in there a few times during the day and I was surprised to see how many people were in there in the middle of the day. I was like, Don't, aren't these people supposed to be working? But, <laughs> exactly. But maybe that is their work. Well, be very careful about the um, the time sink of it. But yeah, if you want to, you and I go together, we have a oh, quick yeah. conversation on there. But one of the things you have to figure out, I don't still know how to do it, but how to exit. Which and is you like, just do the, isn't there the leave quietly button? Yeah, no, but like when you and I are on stage having oh. a conversation, hmm. uh, like, and okay, you and I is harder, uh, but like uh, you really, if it's just you and I, then it's the usual human communication of like, all right, I gotta go. Like, but when it's like four people, you you don't wanna interrupt everyone and announce you're leaving. You just have to, I mean, there's a weird dynamic that I haven't quite figured out. Hmm. Of The how, etiquette isn't clear. The yet. etiquette is not clear. Well, what, it, uh, the etiquette on different platforms and how that changes is really interesting. You know, how YouTube has one etiquette, right. which is kind of, it's a lot of harshness is tolerated on YouTube video comments. Um, Twitter seems a bit harsher than Instagram. Instagram, there's kind of, yeah. it seems to be a People little- People are nice. <laughs> People are really nice. People are really nice yeah. on Instagram for the most part, yeah. um, except for those uh, phishing things. I actually know someone who had their 
quite sizable account poached by those copyright. They come in with those like, you oh. violated co copyright things. There's all sorts of harshness in there that if you think about it in the real world, I like to think about Instagram as if it was the real world. Someone comes over and is basically saying like, hey, can I hold your wallet and go into the bank and I'll get some money out for you? And like, but there's this trust based on the format it comes in that it, it can almost get past your radar unless you're suspicious. If, if you took comments like, you know, your post get a lot of comments and you said, you just walk past 500 random people on the street and just listen to what they say, it like, that's ridiculous. I, mm -hmm. I don't have time for that. Yeah. But the comments somehow take on this importance and this relevance. Yes. And you feel, we, we feel obligated to give them value, right? And so the online communities, the, the rules really are different. Yeah. Um, and they evolve with time, which is fascinating. With Clubhouse, it's a new social network. So it's evolving and people are figuring it out as, as you go. And the same thing with podcasting on video and like scientific podcasting. This is the cool thing when I look at what you've created, I'm learning. I'm thinking like, hmm, that's interesting to do it this way. Cause like nobody, I have nobody to copy. <laughs> not many people to copy, you know well, what I mean? Well, or, you threw out an idea. I'm not gonna put it out here now. Cause I, I don't wanna, cause knowing you, you'll hold yourself to it no matter what. But yeah. when we talked about um, this issue of the challenge of staying on a particular topic for yes. a while, I mean, you do have some cool stuff brewing in there. Oh, no, no. That's I, separate I, from this format. And I, I love your interview format. But um, no, when, no, you, when I, you told me about that, I got really excited that you might go forward. I'm not going to tell your audience what it is. It, but I will say this. It is super cool. I would have never thought about it. It's distinctly different than what I'm doing or what Lex is currently doing. And if you decide to do that podcast, I will be your first and your number one fan. And I know there are going to be millions of other people people interested in that it would be amazing so, much. so if well, you I if you decide to go forward with the idea no. um that would be awesome i was gonna say what it is but now i'm not going to because <laughs> that's even more interesting <laughs>